Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAndLog.com. So I've got a project going on back here, but I thought, hey, I've had this uh, speaker crossover, and I thought, hey, let's do something fun. Let's look at this thing, give a chance to look how filter, which is basically what a speaker crossover is. Uh, takes an input, this is a three-way, so it takes an input, filters frequencies for high, the tweeter, mid-range, and the bass. So this guy here, pretty cool. Uh, I like the construction of that. We're gonna come over here and take a closer look, but hey, you know, this is a pretty nice looking crossover. I'll put the price and stuff down here below. Bought it a while back. There's two of them that come in this box. Okay. So let's take a look at this thing. What I wanna do, what, what we'll do, is look at it back here on the uh, we're gonna do a boldy plot okay that's what we're gonna do we're gonna do a boldy plot and we're gonna look at the phase and gain across the frequency band and see how well this guy seems to work uh, so basically it's a 160 watt uh, crossover and the frequencies are at 800 Hertz and 4500 Hertz okay so the bass and mid-range crossover at 800 and mid-range of tweeter at 4500 hertz. And I think, if I'm reading this right, it's 12 dB per octave for the mid-range for the lower frequency and 24 dB per octave for the higher frequency cross. So, huh. It's the AS33C-2. So, like I said, I'll bring this over. We'll take a closer look. This ought to be fun. Let's do it. Okay, guys, this is the little piece of paper that came with it. This is the unit we have here. And here are two others that you can get. Okay. But this is an AS33C-2. This is some kind of certification card. I don't know. It looks pretty, you know, fish show, but who cares, right? <laughs> anyway. This is a graph showing what it is. Here's the schematic. I'm going to zoom in on that in a moment. And here's the board. So what we see here is, I mean, look at this. This is, you got four big old inductors in there. And they look like they're wrapped pretty nicely. Now, this is what we call an air core. There's, this is an air core as well. See that? Just air inside there. The core is air. So that's an air core. Then we have a ferrite here. But what's nice is it's got a hole in the middle. And I'll tell you why all this air around here. Now here, well first of all, let's just talk about the ferrite. The ferrite helps you get more inductance when you wind wire around it. That's what the ferrite's for. So why would you not use it? And why would it not just be a solid rod instead of a hole in it? Well, that's because ferrite will also saturate with power. So if you're putting a lot of power through it, you can get smaller inductors by using an air core. You have to have enough windings to get the inductance, but you can see there's quite a few windings on this thing. It's pretty impressive, I think. I think it looks like it's pretty well made. Has these MKP poly caps. I don't know who makes them. But there's a couple poly caps here and then some ceramic resistors and a couple capacitors here. Now this one is, well, there's three aluminum electrolyte capacitors. These have the little indents on the end, so they're definitely bipolar, or they're definitely unipolar. You know, there's no positive or negative end on them. This one up here, oh, I see. These are axial, the leads come out the end, so that's like an axle, right? So they call those axial. And uh, as a matter of fact, all these parts are axial, except for this one lone capacitor. The, both leads are on this other end. So yeah, for crossovers for speakers, you're gonna want um, something that's uh, non-polarized. And I think generally what they do is they take two caps and put them back to back. I mean, essentially that's kind of how they're made. I mean, you can tell they're obviously not, you know, this is a one aluminum can, but in, 
the insides of them is kind of made that way. Okay, so this pops off this old plastic base. It says caisson on it. High frequency divider, they call it. There's the back of the board. Nice large copper planes. So it's easy to kind of trace down the circuit what's going on. And then on top side here, we have our input. It says pass input, plus minus. And then over here, it says tweeter. So if you can see that down there, it says tweeter. And let me go back to the input. That was the input there, plus minus. And you can see the plus minus on all these terminals. And over here, it says wolf route up here plus minus again and here's our mid-range over on this side plus minus okay so when you're looking at this board and you flip it over okay keep your eye right here on this terminal towards the middle that's the negative input that would be this guy right here okay so you can see this ground plane, this copper plane that it's on right here. Well, if you follow it up here, you can see it goes to that minus, um, that minus connection on the tweeter. And then if you follow to this connection, that would be the mid-range. So you can see this big old plane captures these things. And this one comes up here for the woofer. Okay, so a big old copper plane just connects everything together. And then the positive is going to go through, you know, that's where you can trace it through all these components. Well, luckily, we have a schematic. So there's the schematic. And, you know, the specification up here. And the picture of it there. And here is the graph. So you can see the base curve. This is a mid-range curve. And this is a tweeter curve. So we're going to look on the oscilloscope to see if that's what we get when we put the input signal into here. Okay? We're going to go look at that. Hey, one more thing. Let's go back to the board for a moment as far as construction goes. Okay, so looking at the board again, just to point out a few things here. Uh, I don't know who makes these capacitors. They look pretty fancy looking. The, you know, cans and that. Um, the poly caps. Don't know who makes those either. So, I'm sure they're all Chinese made. I mean, you know, it's where pretty much everything's made these days, right? But, uh, so this capacitor says it's a 100 volt cap it's a BP 105 so there uh, yeah so BP that used to be guy I don't know if that's the same BP but there used to be a BP I think Phillips company or so these are 105 degree C rated capacitors so that's good 100 volt 100 volt on this one too okay so this one's 33 microfarads 100 volt for the mid-range down here for the high frequency for the tweeter it's 12 microfarads 100 volt and this guy up here 15 microfarad and I'm sure it's another 100 volt I can't see it though okay the one thing I wanted to point out is you notice how these guys are all pointing different directions all you know it's kind of like Wow, they're just kind of haphazard. It's like they just tried to squeeze them all in. That's why they ended up that way. Well, that's not really true. Um, they did it pretty smartly. These inductors have a magnetic field around them, okay? So it comes in here, you know, it comes out one pole, goes into another pole. So when you put them at angles like this, they don't affect or influence each other as much. So this one's coming this way, so it's filled. The fields are all perpendicular from each other. You notice that? So that helps them not interfere with each other. Okay, and, and I can see where 
right on the board they put the specs. It's really nicely silk screened this way. 800 hertz, 4500 hertz. So it talks about the intersect frequencies they call them. Uh, it says Hong Kong here, Kaysen. Okay, so tweeter is 12 dB per octave. Mid range is 24 dB per octave. If you can see that there. And the capacitors are labeled C5 here, C1 here, C4 here. So you can go back to the schematic and, and find uh, where the parts are. So that's, I think it's pretty darn nice actually. This one says C2 down here, uh, R1 here. So yeah, they're all labeled. I mean, it's, you know, you might be able to pause that or snap it and get a good look at it. But yeah. Now there is flux left on the board, but I'm sure this is no clean flux, so uh, yeah, wow. Tie wraps, nice and snug, holding the inductors in place. So, you know, seems well made to me. And then it has a tray to keep the board from, you know, from the weight of the board, kind of keep everything square. So that's kind of nice. So when you mount it, you know, you've got these mounting screws here where it shows to put mounting screws and you got a nice solid mount and it's plastic. I'm probably wouldn't hurt to put a little soft pad or something to keep the vibration down because these magnets might vibrate. Anyway, there you go. Let's hook it up and see what happens. All right, guys, so this is coming from my scope. This is generator output number one. So I'm just going to clip down the plus and clip down the minus. Uh-oh. Here we go. And then scope probes. All right. And so then scope probe number one, same connection, goes to the input. And scope probe number two on the output. And you know what? Let's do, uh, let's do the tweeter first. Now just a note. You know, like I showed, all the grounds are connected. So I just put my scope probe on the closest one to help keep the noise down on that one. And anyway, let's go to the scope and see what that looks. So I'll move this around to the other connections. Meanwhile, I'm gonna keep us up at the scope so we can just watch that, okay? Okay guys, so the input, channel one, output, channel two, and setup for this is pretty easy because uh, here let's just go through it's DC full bandwidth and 10x okay DC full bandwidth 10x okay so they're both set up the same way so all we have to do is go to the app button and then uh, let's see here's reference circuit that's just showing how I've got things set up and then the setup Let's go, uh, okay, channel one's the input, channel two's the output. The frequency start at 20 hertz. And uh, do we want to start? Yeah, we'll start at 20 hertz and we'll go to 100 kilohertz. Even though they only went to 20 kilohertz on their graph, we'll go to 100. And see, amplitude, I think that's maxed out there. Okay. And we're going to say it's low impedance. And I think we're all set up there. Okay, and points per decade. We're going to go to 30. It's going to take a while. I can go down to 10 and up to 90. And I think 30 is enough to give a good picture. Uh, it's just how many steps of resolution you get, basically. So now I just have to hit run. Okay, I just zoomed in on the screen a little tighter. And let's hit run. So up here, it shows the waveforms, which is nice, because then you can kind of see what's happening. Now we're on the tweeter, so the blue, the yellow's input, blue's output, so we really shouldn't see much signal come through until we get to the higher frequencies. So we're coming across frequencies here, there's 10 hertz, 100, 1K, 10K, 100K, and it goes out to one meg, but we'll see. Uh, and then the phase and the gain here. So the red is the phase and the blues gain. Okay, this is going to take a while, so I'll probably uh, just speed us through. 
All right, so just to point out, um, the gain here started off down around 75 dBs, I would say, minus 75, pretty low. And we're up about 60, 60 dBs at 100 hertz. I mean, you can see the blue signal kind of increasing in amplitude. It's kind of an interesting thing that happened there. Okay, so we're done. Now, the high crossover is supposed to be 4900 hertz, right? There's 2K, 3, 4, so right around in there. And there's 0 dB, so it looks like 2, 3, 4. It looks like it hit it. And, you know, it's just what they said it looks like to me. Now, the one thing it did do is it kind of overshot. Now, here's 0 dBs right here. And, and then right through there, we stop at 100K. That's what we told it to do. And so, yeah, so it's pretty flat between 10K and... You know, so I guess just your high frequencies, but at 4K where it came up above zero, you know, that's where it's going to pass band. That's kind of the uh, where your speaker is going to get most of the uh, sound above zero dB. So now if you go from here and you, and you want to see the slope of that, then we kind of go from, let's see, 4K if we imagine this at 4K down here, the slope of that is about 60 dB per decade. They said about 24 dB per octave. So that's every time you double the frequency. So that's, if this was 2, 3, 4, 4.5K, 2.5K were down around 15. So it looks about, it looks about right, about 12 dB per octave. So, yeah, I think that that is technically meeting their spec. It doesn't really say anything about overshoot. We kind of overshot up to about 15 dB right there. So we can do some measurements here. We turn on the cursors and put cursor one. We'll put that right there at the cursor one right about 4500 that's about as close as I get it I guess and it's about minus 1.2 dB right there and the phase now another thing look at the phase the phase was way up here around 144 and then dropped down to about six this is six uh, degrees down here so it drops it takes a huge drop pretty fast and it's pretty flat so this portion of the curves I kind of like, it's only six, degree, six degrees of phase shift, and it's pretty flat through here. But this, you know, the, the really the music, you know, from 10K to 20K is just that section right there. So it's pretty flat through there. Kind of peaky around five kilohertz. But here, let's get cursor two. Let's go find that peak. So there's that peak right there, and that is about 6.7 kilohertz. And the phase is already down around 78. Started at 159, it's dropped down 78 degrees at that point. <clears throat> so, I don't know. You know what, let's go back. I want to just see where that resonance spot hit right there. That is 1.3K. I want to see where this other one happened. Right there, 731 hertz. Now, remember, the low frequency crossover is around 800 hertz. So I think we're seeing some interaction right there from the lower frequency. But, you know, that's down around 30 dB down in that neighborhood so you know we're 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 pretty far down once you get down past you know 15 20 db it's it's you've dropped quite a bit all right i've set it up for this the bass or the low frequency 
So let's go ahead and go back and just take a picture of that in your mind. There's, you know, it's kind of what that looks like. Okay, now, let's see. Now we're going to see kind of the opposite on this side. It's going to be the low frequency pass and then drop down. Okay, and that's around 800 hertz, so right around in here. Here's the woofer out. Let's do it. That's what I expected to see. Expected to see the output even with the input when we first start off. So zero dB, no attenuation. That's what we expected. And also I like this, the phase is also at zero. Okay, so it's starting to separate now. Wow. Wasn't expecting that. Okay, the, the phase took a big drop down and then bounced back up. Okay, it's happening right around 800, that's close to 800 hertz, just like they said. Let's go to the analyze and get the cursors out. Oh wow, look at that. So there's that one cursor where I left it before. Look at that, it just happened to hit right there. So that's what we saw when we saw the tweeters. We saw this happening over there, a reflection kind of into the tweeter. But, okay, so that is number two, that's 19 dB. So it had a 19 dB uh, peaking. But it did happen right around 730 hertz so just right where that's where we saw the tweeter right and then the other one was right here so we're kind of seeing something there on this one as well but it does fall off let's see this one I think was supposed to be what was it the other one was supposed to, I, I don't know one's 12 dB and one's 24 dB per octave so this one if we say zeros here, minus 12, minus 12 is right around in here, and that's about 1.6K. So that one looks like it dropped about 12 dB. Okay, so maybe the mid-range is the one that's going to drop 24. You know, actually I want to leave these cursors where they are, because we'll see how that reflects to the... Uh, mid-range okay so this is the peaking we saw before and this is also where we saw something interesting happen it's right in the middle of that phase shift right there now the phase during this pass band was right on zero I mean right here looked great and then it kind of peaks off at 800 Hertz okay so now let's go look at the mid-range all right, guys, let's go ahead and sweep this one. I got to go back, and now we're going to see the mid range. So, we kind of expect very little signal at the low frequencies, and then we'll see it increase the same amplitude as the yellow one through here somewhere, and then it'll drop back down to the smallest signal through here. Wow, okay. So it looks like we got a little peaking on both crossovers. Okay, let's go back and measure that. Okay, turn on the cursors, and look at that. When we turn on the cursors, this one's a little bit off from where we saw the other two bumps. It's, it's closer to 901 kilohertz. And this one is right on that bump. So we kind of saw those uh, bumps on the other curves. But yeah, so 60B, this is 60B right here. So we're actually getting a little bit of amplification uh, in our pass band. So if we took all these three curves and put them on top of each other, we're seeing a lot, we're, I think we're seeing a lot of peaky stuff, a little amplification to this, uh, you know, roughly 800 hertz to, you know, out here, 800 hertz. So it's a little bit peaky, I think, but 
Um, that's interesting. Not too bad, I don't think. Now, as far as the roll-off, if we go from, say, 800 here to 400, it's dropping, well, we're, uh, it should only be zero, but we're up, well, yeah, let's say we're zero right here, around 800, and if we drop down to 400, it's right about there. It's, it's, I don't know, it's close to 12 dB, I think. This looks like a similar slope. So, yeah, if we go from 10K to 20K, we're dropping about 15 uh, dB. So, the, it seems like the roll-offs to me seem all, all pretty close to around 15 dB per octave. So, hey guys, what do you think? That's kind of cool. I, I'm, I was impressed from the photographs because uh, I could see poly caps and and nice looking inductors and for a three three-way crossover it looked like I had a fair number of parts uh, I'm always kind of wondering about the resistors you know how much power you're just losing in resistors but I know they provide dampening and three-way crossovers are not easy to design where they're flat now some of you guys out there might be really good at it and I know there's some software out there we're going to do another video where we're going to look at some math on this, okay? And also, okay, so, oh, as far as price, I think this was like around 48 bucks on Amazon. I'll put the link down below, and remember, that link doesn't charge any more. It helps the channel if you use those guys, but uh, it's pretty cool crossover. And now, one thing I want to say what we just did um, if you're sitting there in a class and you're going over some math and you're calculating things, you might come up with curves similar to what we just saw. Now, some of the things we call parasitics, uh, you know, the ESR, the capacitors, the DC resistance of the coils, um, you know, just things like that, inductance of the capacitors themselves and the resistors, you know, things like that, they can also affect those things. So if you've taken into account a lot of that stuff in your math, you know, that kind of detail, you probably get something pretty close to what we just saw. But is that really what's gonna happen in an amplifier when you're putting power through this into speakers? Mm, probably kind of close, but probably not quite the same either. Because when you actually have current, you know, power going through devices, it puts them um, kind of in a different uh, threshold. You know, the inductance of permeability, there's things that, you know, you're loading things down with uh, power and things change, okay? So this is what, you know, this is small signal stuff, right? We're only putting in, what, two and a half volts, something like that. So small signals, but hey, it still gives an idea of what's going on. What I want to do is I want to show you the math, you know, some of the basic math on this, uh, some of the basic just when you look at a circle, what you're looking at, and and then I want to put some power into it at some of the uh, points we saw in the curves to see what really happens when we're putting power. <laughs> All right, so I'll use an amplifier, signal generator, and we'll, we'll exercise this thing a little bit and see what happens. Okay, we'll see how close it matches the small signal, but hey, do you like that? Was that a cool video? I kind of like audio stuff. You know, power supplies, my specialty, audio amplifier stuff, been interested in for years. Uh, there's so much in analog electronics that overlaps, and so fun stuff, right? Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.